Look, that's you down there at the end of a stick. I've never used one of these things before, so if all of a sudden I trip up and we go head first, head first into the bushes, you'll know what happened. This little video, which isn't quite so little anymore, I guess, probably over 20 minutes by the time I get it all put together, is all about harvesting and uh, replanting some succession crops. I harvested the garlic, the onions, uh, shallots, beets, mm, round black Spanish radish, I think that's about it, and I planted my fall brassicas, and I can't believe it, but I just planted a third crop of uh, beets. And I've checked the variety, I guess I mentioned later on in the video here, the variety is Merlin. Um, I know I've never had such success before with, with, with beets. I certainly appreciate being in the, in the hoop house. So this little walk that I did is from the front of my house out here to the hoop house. So you probably saw a lot of trees and that sort of thing. But anyway, what follows is uh, a video on... Uh, harvesting my crops and uh, replanting some succession um, planting for the fall. Also, I, I'm storing the onions and the shallots and the garlic, hardening them or drying them, whatever, in the loft in the cabin, which I think is turning out to be a good place for that. Um, it's nice and warm and dry and good air circulation. So. Hopefully that will work. I'm about to do a potato reveal. I won't be as good at this as Brendan is. I don't have all those wonderful stories to tell. I, these are the Kara potatoes, a seed which originally came from Brendan. And they are the ones that have been in the longest and they were also well chitted when I uh, planted them. I can't decide if, I don't, hopefully this isn't blight, I think they're just dying back, but I'm not sure of that. They haven't looked too good since um, we had the, well I guess they called it a subtropical storm when it hit here, but Hurricane Arthur a month or so ago really knocked them around. The other potatoes, the various varieties that I'm growing there that I, I guess West Coast seeds I bought the mixture of seed potatoes from, the plants are still looking quite good but the caras are starting to yellow and go over so I'm hoping that just means that they're finished. I'm doing two, I really don't need to do two, I don't have that use for that many potatoes but I planted them in both uh, these smart pots and these plastic grow bags. They're both seven gallon size, same soil mixture. Each one has one seed potato in it. And they've had the same uh, fertilizer, organic fertilizer, and that, that's been it. So. Anyway, I don't know what we'll get when I dump these things out, but I, I'm just interested to see if there's any great difference. The uh, smart pots are supposed to do what they call air pruning, and obviously a heavy plastic bag won't do that, so... I don't have scales or anything to weigh, I just, if there's an obvious difference, there's an obvious difference. If not, it doesn't make any difference, I guess. So. They're probably quite wet had a lot of rain lately. A lot of rain all summer. Potato number one. Well, so far I'm pleased, I guess. I spoke too soon, there aren't that many. <laughs> I opened up a bag of the um, Siglinda, uh, which is an early variety. Um, I didn't bother doing a filming. I didn't think there would be that many in there, and there wasn't really. They were still quite small, even though they were early potatoes. They had been Harvested too early for them, I think. But they were very good. Agreeing with Brendan, his 
has commented a few times about uh, it doesn't make much sense to have a garden full of potatoes and and be buying them from the shops. So I have so many growing here that more than I'll use in a long time. So it really doesn't make much sense to. It must be the seed potato right there, I guess. Yeah, a little soft. And the roots are really strong root structure. Well, if there's anything else left in there, it's pretty small, I think. Put those in a plastic bag. You hear me slopping around in the water and mud here. We had two days of heavy rain. One of those summers, I guess, we're going to have lots of rain. And a lot of them are still quite small, so... Yeah, I'm really not sure just why the plants are dying back, whether it's the storm damage or... If that is some bit of blight or something that's happening there, because it has been... It has been a wet summer. Well, if there's anything else left there, it's pretty small, so we will ignore it, I guess. Here comes the, the smart pot. You don't want to leave the smart pot. There we go. Ugh, that was the seed potato. Rotten. That's it. Nothing in that but roots, I guess. I don't know. I don't think there's any great difference there, really. Again, they're small. Small, but will be enjoyed. I like the carrot tom yeah, tomatoes, the carrot potatoes very much. Well, let's get the two bags here. No, maybe a bit more in the ones that came out of the smart pot, but not a significant difference, I don't think. A few ounces, maybe. But anyway, so that unless something else happens later on when I'm doing more of these, dumping them out. It really isn't any, any great difference in growing them in a smart pot or in the um, grow bag. And the grow bags are certainly a lot cheaper. Buy a 25 um, package, 20, a package of 25 of those seven um, gallon grow bags, well, for less than what you'd pay for one smart pot. They're, they're just a matter of cents, a few cents a piece, Less than 50 cents a piece, I would say, if I remember the price on them correctly, anyway. But 
I'm going to move on. I have more harvesting to do here. Probably. Well, I guess as you can see from that relatively wide angle shot, I think is what the GoPro calls a medium wide angle shot, I've just finished doing some harvesting. Uh, they're all in there or not, I'm not quite sure. But these are the black, round black Spanish radish, uh, beets, shallots, Spanish onions, uh, garlic that I grew from bulbils. This is its third year from bulbils. Last year it was small heads of garlic and I uh, spread, you know, broke them apart and planted the small cloves and this year I've got relatively bigger heads. And then my regular garlic crop there which is called uh, Northern Quebec. And get one of those. Not large heads either, but uh, usable, I guess. And get that out in front of the camera here. Just pulled them out of the ground so they've still got wet, damp earth on them. It's not billed as an um, elephant garlic, but I would call it an elephant garlic. It's Usually it's about four large cloves to the head. And as you can see, those aren't the biggest of heads, but... Uh, I'll get use out of them anyway, and I think that's the same variety that I will grow again. I, I like the variety. I don't save my own cloves to replant. Uh, I have a source for organic garlic cloves from Heirloom Varieties, the Annapolis Seed Company in Nova Scotia. and I will order from him again, I think, and, and plant his. His cloves are bigger than mine, so you tend to get bigger, bigger heads of garlic out of it. And this is the uh, ones that I've grown from bulbils, which has sort of a purplish head. I'm not at all sir, sure, certain what the variety is. It was too many years ago. Numerous cloves, uh, eight, ten or so cloves or so. So when I head that small, they're pretty small cloves of garlic. But I've been using some of those already this summer, and it's, it's good. It's a, nice, it's a nice garlic. And my beets. Uh, this is the second crop of beets. I've used up the first crop um, and a lot of good sized ones and then also small ones. Always fascinates me growing right beside one that grew quite large. You'll have a small one but my first next task here is to get the greens off before they wilt because I enjoy the beet greens as, as much as the beets themselves. I'll probably cook all of the greens right away and uh, eat them over the next few days by reheating them. And shallots. Uh, a decent size, not very many. I don't know how many uh, seed shallots cloves I had now. It wasn't very many to begin with, but uh, the ones that I managed to get to start growing in small pots grew on and produced some relatively good size heads of, of shallots, uh, the ones that had not started in pots, I planted them and they didn't come up. Same thing happened last year. I don't know what that means. When I planted them, they looked like they were still nice and firm and whatever, but never, never came up out of the ground at all. And the Spanish onions, as I said, I was going to harvest on the 1st of August. I have to because I want to, I have my brassica seedlings, the uh, cabbage, two different kinds of cabbage, uh, broccoli and cauliflower. The seedlings are ready to go in the ground here in the next few days as soon as I get these beds prepared for it. But that's probably one of the larger onions there and they go all the way down medium size and then down to these small ones. I think as has been suggested by both Ian and Brendan I will be planting those outside next year. Uh, probably in the bed uh, that I'm growing sweet potatoes in, the new raised bed. I'll probably plant my, my onions and I'll probably get these sets again. I never had any luck with sets before, but they have produced onions for me. I'll have a use even for the small ones. Uh, I plan to do a fermented jardinier, a fermented pickle of uh, a mixture of different vegetables. My cucumbers, which are just starting, haven't really bloomed yet. Like They've got some buds there ready to bloom. and uh, Some of the hot chilies, these onions, uh, some carrots, whatever, from the garden, and just do a mixed fermented jardinier. Well, that size peeled will be ideal for that, I think. So they're all going to get used. The next task in here, I guess, is to get at the the uh, beet greens. 
I know you can also eat the radish greens. I guess I didn't show you those, did I? I don't think I did anyway. Here we go again if I did. That's one of the larger ones. Round black Spanish radish. Medium sized one. And then once again they go all the way down to that's both the size of an ordinary radish, I guess. They're supposed to store well and are used in soups and whatever. So that's my next thing with them. I'm going to try them in a soup. The one that I grew in the house in the wintertime, I tried it in a salad, and it's, it's very tough and extremely strong. I knew they were going to be extremely strong. That's why I was interested in growing them. But uh, I think cooking them in a, in a soup or whatever will tenderize them and maybe reduce some of the heat from them as well. But pleased with the growth of them anyway. I had to pull them because they were starting to bolt. The, some of the beets and these were both growing in a row down between the rows of the tomato plants in, in smart pots. And these were starting to shoot up blossom buds, so I thought time to get those out of the ground, I guess. You can also eat radish greens. I only tried it once myself and it's not to my taste. So I'll be turning them into eggs. I'll give them to the hens. I know they really enjoy them. I don't know if they'll eat the uh, onion tops or not. I'll try them on a few of them. If they won't eat them, I will uh, put them in the compost pile. But I've got my work cut out for me the next few hours, getting all of this ready. I plan to uh, dry and season the, the garlic and the shallots and the onions in the loft in the cabin. Um, the cabin was supposed to have a sleeping loft, but I didn't like the idea of that. It would be a small window up there and no way you could put a window big enough that it would be a safe fire exit. And with a wood stove, I just didn't want anybody ever sleeping up there, so I didn't make the roof steep enough that you could use it for a sleeping loft. But it's a, I think it would be a good place to uh, store the onions and the garlic and the shallots to age them and dry them off anyway, and I can probably leave them in there until the weather gets cold enough in November or whatever that I start to worry about them freezing and by then I probably will have used a lot of it. So that is the plans. I'll give you a look at what they look like once I get them up in the loft. Well I didn't count and I don't know how many onions are there but I was surprised to find out there are that many. Going down both sides those are onions and in the very back there if that's in the focus I guess it is there's two or three short rows across of onions and then the shallots, the two kinds of garlic, and up here the uh, round black Spanish um, radish and the, the beets. I'll put the plant list once again down below this video. I haven't been doing that in the later videos, but it will give you the name of some of the varieties here anyway. I think the beets are Merlin, but I'm not really certain. I know I've grown Merlin before. It did clear. It's still a bit cloudy, but the fog's gone and we've had quite a bit of sunshine. It's far too hot to work inside the greenhouse, the hoopos, whatever. I uh, have got them outside here to do some drying. I don't think I'll leave them out overnight. I may change my mind later on, but I think I may uh, try to get the onions and garlic both up in the loft before dark. And I think another reason for them not being... A lot of them not being quite large enough, or uh, they're all usable, but you know, everybody wants to have the biggest one they can possibly bring out of the ground. I think Brendan hit that on the nose. Um, there are far too many onions planted in the size of bed. The bed is, um, let me see, four feet wide, and it was probably about 12 feet of the bed used. It's 16 feet deep, but I probably only used about 12 of it for the onions. So they were they were too close together. I think if they had been more space available, they the ones planted would have been larger. Just wouldn't have as many, I guess. Anyway, that's what they look like out in the sunshine drying. I will uh, try to give you a look at the uh, beds once I have them prepared and the uh, brassicas uh, planted. I also have uh, a tray of uh, beets. Uh, they've been in the tray kind of long. I, hopefully I, when I transplant them they'll take off and grow me a, a third crop of beets. But I plan to put those in as well anyway to see what happens. So I'll show you that before I close the video down. You'll have to excuse the horrible hissing sound. It's the gas Coleman lantern. The only way I can get light enough up in the loft here to do a little bit of video. This is probably an ideal spot for curing or drying. Uh, the garlic, the shallots, and the 
onions. However, I don't think I could sleep out here. <laughs> There's a very strong onion garlic smell when you come through the door. Actually, when I was putting the onions up, I had to crawl out into the back of the loft space here, and the gases coming off of them was a lot like slicing onions. I was starting to tear up. But, and I'm also surprised, I guess, at the, the weight. As you can see, they're not all that large, and I didn't actually weigh them. But the cardboard box that I had those in, I would say somewhere between 25 and 30 pounds, which is uncured green onions. I mean, they will weigh less once they've finished drying off and forming their final skin and all that good stuff. But anyway, there is the onions, the garlic, and the shallots harvested and stored in the loft here uh, and I think as I've said before I'm convinced I can probably keep them right out here until well, probably at least late November before it gets cold enough I'd have to worry about it dropping below freezing inside the cabin. Well I've finally finished uh, I guess this probably looks quite a bit different than it did the last time I showed in here after all the harvesting I spent most of the afternoon here preparing the beds. I would like to have had some compost of my own to add to the beds, but I don't have any that's finished. So I bought a bale of uh, peat moss and added that. And because peat moss is acidic, I also put in quite a bit of lime. And then I added uh, quite a bit of the organic uh, fertilizer that I've been using, which I suspect is a blood bone and meal, whatever. It doesn't tell you what the what it's made up of. I just say that it also has calcium, which is a good thing to have, I guess. Anyway, the first bed here on the left, the first plants, about half of it, are broccoli. The last half is cauliflower. And behind that tall um, ground cherry, which probably is a mistake in the middle, I haven't planted one of those things in here in three years, and I still pull thousands, literally thousands, up every year. I think the moles and the mice must have been stealing them and burying them all over the place. I can't get over the number of plants that I pull up every year, but I've left that one because I do like them. Behind that is a few cabbages. Off to the right behind the uh, tomatoes, and you might be able to see a little bit of the eggplant leaves there. I've put in the third batch of uh, beets. The variety is Merlin, I checked and I'm not so sure how well they're going to do. The seedlings are a little long in the tooth, so to speak. They probably should have been in the ground two weeks ago, but they're in now. We'll see what happens. And that long skinny bed off to the right that had um, uh, the garlic in now has cabbages, two different kinds. Rendero, which is a red cabbage, and Bronco, which is a green cabbage, sort of alternating. So should they actually grow, it should be attractive to look at anyway. Well, this has gotten, once again, out of hand and a bit too long. Thank you very much for watching.